Thus Art Transformational Transformation Sanctuary International. We are a church based here in the United Kingdom. However, our message is reaching out to the world, to people wherever they may be. And thank you for joining us again tonight on Zoom, on Facebook. And for those of you who will be watching this, um, this, this session on YouTube in the future, we welcome you all in the name of Jesus Christ. We trust you've had a wonderful day. And tonight we are again going to go into a session of God's word. We're going to study God's word together. Um, and we do that because the Lord gave us a scripture in Transformation Sanctuary, which guides everything we do. And that is 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. He says, but we all with unveiled face, beholding as in the mirror, the, the glory, glory of the Lord, Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. So we look into his word so that we are transformed from glory to glory. So I trust God that by the time this study finishes tonight, you will take a step closer to your glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We will start with a word or prayer by my co-pilot, if I should be a proper co-pilot tonight, a proper co-pilot tonight. Hallelujah. Good evening, everyone. Lovely to have you here again. Um, and if you are going to listen to it um, future. in future, or in the, either in the short or the nearest future, we hope that this will bless you. Um, let's pray. Let's pray tonight. Father, we are grateful. Yes for your mercy and your grace upon our lives. Mm -hmm. We do not take it for granted that week in, week out, we come here to be blessed by you, to learn from you. To learn from Lord, you. we pray as we come tonight again, may you enlighten us in, in your word. Amen. May you open our hearts to that which we need to see. Amen. Especially as we learn about you. Mm. you. You are Father. Yes. You are the standard. Yes. You are the epitome of everything we should desire to be. Yes. Lord. We pray as we hear your word tonight again. May it transform us. Amen. May we be more and more like you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And we thank you, Father, because a day will come ah. when we will see you face to face oh, yes, in Lord. eternity. Amen. Giving glory to you. Yes, Lord. Being happy knowing you. Yes, Lord. Being happy that you are Father. Yes, Lord. And worshiping you day and night. Yes, Lord. We look forward to such a day. Hallelujah. And we pray that we will all be part of it. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you for that wonderful prayer. And it is Sessions like this, it is studying God's word, which makes us more and more like him, which makes us more and more like him. There are other things we do in church, which are for our own benefits, um, but studying God's word transforms us and makes us more like him. And that's the ultimate, the ultimate goal of every believer is to be like Jesus. Amen. That's our ultimate goal. That should be the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal is not riches. The ultimate goal is not wealth. The ultimate goal is not what we can acquire. The ultimate goal is to be like Christ, to be like Jesus, to be like Jesus. Okay, so tonight we're going to continue with a line of study we started three weeks ago but slightly different um we started three weeks ago to look at what people call anthropomorphism which is giving human attributes to inanimate objects to animals to spirits and as it relates to bible study specifically to god so that's what we started three weeks ago. And we looked at that thing. We looked at different scriptures. God rested. God was sorry. God rejoiced. All kinds of things we looked at. And we said, 
God showed us all of that. Although he is spirit, let's be clear about that. John 4, 24, God is spirit. And that came from Jesus. So no qualms about it. God is spirit. And although he is spirit, he shows us all those attributes to allow us to know how to live our lives as humans. Because if he can do it, then it means we can also we can also do it. And we've seen all of that. And also so that we don't beat ourselves up when things don't go our way. We, we find, found times when things didn't go God's way. And we saw how he responded to that. He was hurt to his heart. He was sorry. He regretted. And even when he was punishing, he relented. It was like, okay, that's enough. Remember when David counted the census mm. in Israel? It was the end of David's life when he did the census and he counted the people. One book said the Lord was angry with Israel. Another book said Satan moved David against Israel. Anyways, David counted the people, which he shouldn't have done. And then he started feeling sorry for his action. And then God sent him a prophet and said, you have sinned. And because you have sinned, I am giving you three options for punishment. You know, it's interesting, isn't it? When we come to God, we ask him for things we need. Yeah. We ask for mercy because we have sinned. Mm -hmm. If you ever got a message from God saying, I got three punishments for you, choose <laughs> one of them. What on earth will you do with that kind of message? And that was what happened to David. Guys, there are levels in our relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Levels. God came to man and said, you sinned. I'm going to punish you. So there's no, Lord, I'm sorry, Lord, I'm sorry, Lord, I'm sorry. No, no, no. Three punishments, choose one. Mm -hmm. Same with Moses. Moses struck the rock and God said, you ain't entering the promised land. And Moses begged. Look, Moses had done this on behalf of people a thousand times and God answered. Moses begged for himself. And what did God say to Moses? God said, well, you, you've missed it. He said, don't mention this matter to me again. Hmm. What? There are levels. And yet this same God will bury Moses and nobody will know where he is born. The only man whose grave was dug by God, who was placed in a coffin by God, and God knows what kind of coffin he puts him in. You never can tell God can create a coffin like that. Gold coffin, glass, whatever, diamond. And God buried him. You think God would have just have thrown him into the earth like that? No. Because his, his soul had already gone to God. That was what mattered to God. Had, anyway. So that was what mattered to God. So why did God take it upon himself to bury him? And so that people won't turn him into a little God, want to be worshipped. Anyway, God loved him so much. God buried him. But God denied him that request and all of that. Anyways, where are we going with all of this? We studied God's attributes as a human. Now, tonight, we'll try to round this up if we're able to finish what we're doing tonight. Otherwise, we'll continue next. We'll continue next week. And tonight, what we want to study is God's bodily structure and what that means for us. God's, we were trying to find a title yesterday. And what's like God's anatomy? I was like, oh, no, 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 no. That's going too far. <laughs> we can't go into that. <laughs> no. But God's bodily structure. Bodily, body like. Body like structure. structure. Because we've said he's a spirit. Because we've said he's a spirit, yeah. God's body like structures. And by that, we mean his head, my head, my shoulder, my knees, my toes, you know, hands. Face, eyes, nose, eyes, nose, ears, like the five shoulder, senses, back, shoulder, back, chest, feet, feet, and all of that. And what those things mean for us? What those things mean for us? Let me ask you a question. Um, if somebody sees you, consider these three scenarios and consider how your reaction may be different in these three scenarios. Three people see you 
at three different times on the road. You're walking on the road. And the first person says, excuse me, excuse me. Think about what your reaction will be. One, yeah. Second one says, excuse me, um, Vicky. Second one actually calls your name, Vicky. Think of what your reaction will be to that second one. The third one says, excuse me, Vicky Oyetayo, or Vicky Lawal, or Vicky, daughter of Mr. Oyetayo. What might be different in the way you respond to these three scenarios? So uh, I guess the first one is, excuse me, excuse me, like, what? You... Why, why, who are you? Why are you bothering me? Or what, what, what do you want? Mm -hmm. And it, it depends on when he says, excuse me. If, it's, if I'm really busy, I'm like, sorry, I don't have time. No, if it's in the dark. Oh, if it's all hot, no, I won't run. I'll just, <laughs> I'll quicken my pace. Um, <laughs> But if somebody says, excuse me, Vicky, then oh. that's somebody that knows me. Mm. I'll pay some uh, attention that, mm. oh, you know, is this somebody I know? I know. Is this somebody, a friend? Yeah, a friend. Could yeah, it could be anyone. And if somebody now mentions my name and my last name, says, Don't definitely me. that person knows, I will assume, mm. because the person may not know me, mm. but I will assume that that person must really know me mm. and know my background. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Now, why did we use that scenario? Because that often, that sometimes in the spiritual, that works when we go into God's presence. Remember when Jesus was on earth, yeah? Some people will get healed by him. Others will say, Jesus, help me. Like the 10 lepers. Others will say, Jesus, son, son of, of David. David. Yeah, help me. What's the difference? Because when they call him son of David, they drive it home that they truly know who he is. Yeah. And I would assume that those people will catch his attention and he will stop and he'll give them whatever, whatever they whatever they want. So also, so that, that's part of what we are looking at tonight. That's part of what we are looking at tonight. That if we know these body parts mentioned about God in scripture and the reasoning behind them, what they do, we can then take it as a tool when we go into the place oh, of right. prayer. Because as you find out, most of them actually were used by saints of that time in their prayers to God. So there must be a reason why they used it because they felt it was effective. And if they used it in their time, as we deepen our knowledge of God and how we draw closer to him, we also need to use it in our time. And Christians, we, nowadays, our prayers are so boring. It's either shakale, shakala, shakale, shakala, shakale, shakala, shakale, shakala, 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 in Jesus' name. Amen. End of. But I think we can pray with more intelligence, but that's only dependent on what we know about God. So first question tonight, first question, everybody get ready. First question, get ready. You can put your, your you can chat on Facebook. Because yeah, I know you can put chat. your message in the put, chat. Put your, yeah, put, put your thoughts in the chat. Do you know of any part of God's body that is mentioned in the Bible, any part, any part of God's body that is mentioned in the Bible. Huh? Yep. Oh. Yeah. Apple of God's eye. You are. Oh, thank you. I am the, I'll come to you, sir. I am the apple of God's eye. So it means God has eyes and I am right in it. I am the apple of his eye. Thank you. That's a good one. Um, I think Tosi or is that raw, has put God's back. God's back. Oh, okay. God's back. So God's back is mentioned in scripture. As how though? God's back. 
When Moses, yes, 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 you're going there. When Moses saw God, when Moses saw God, he saw God's back because God said, you Come cannot on. see my face and leave. Mm -hmm. So Moses saw, God walked past Moses, covered Moses with his hand. I think that's uh, an out of this world experience, just the fact that God covers you with his hand. God lifted Moses, tiny Moses, put him in the cleft of a rock and covered his hand and covered him with his hand. So when Moses looked up, he was looking at the hands of God covering him. So maybe I just give you one there. And then when God walked past him, God took his hand away and Moses was able to see God's back and all that. Okay, yes, any more for the more? What other parts of God, God's body is mentioned in scripture? Put it in the chat, shout it out, or put it on the comment in, on Facebook. God's hands. God's hand. Okay. That's another one mentioned. God's hand. Any example of that? God's hand. Anybody know where God's hand? Where did that the Lord's hand is upon me or us? The Lord's hand. Well, I know the Bible says the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Um, okay. His hand. No, no, it's a, it's a guest. It was a guess. It was a good guess, though. It was a good guess. Trust me. It was a good guess. Uh, yeah. I'll take that and nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Any more for the more? God's hands. God's um. God's finger. God's finger. finger God's God. finger. The finger of God. The finger of God. Okay. Yes. Yeah, the finger of God. Any more from anyone? Yes. God's here, sir. God's ear. Yeah, yes. Okay, okay. Ah, um, he who uh, has ears to hear, let him hear. Oh, he no. who has. <laughs> I like that. He <laughs> <laughs> who has an ear. Yeah. Uh, give us yeah. ear to something uh, like that in, in sound. He, he hears our prayers. He does. <laughs> Yeah, he oh. hears the, maybe <laughs> let me open it. Uh, he hears our prayers. You are really trying, <laughs> Sister KG. You are really trying. You are pushing it. Well, I like it. I like it. I'm loving it. I'm enjoying it. God's ears, definitely. Yeah. Um, the one that. which came to my mind was uh, I think it's Psalm 59, where he says, Oh, he has to. The hand of the Lord is not shortened to save, save. neither mm -hmm. are his ears yes. to hear. Yes. 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 But yes. your yes. sin and your iniquity have separated you from God. So yes, you're right. Well done, God's KG. ear. Well done, well done, Sister KG. Well. Any more God body parts of God mentioned in Scripture? Uh, some are mentioned indirectly. How? Some are mentioned indirectly, correct? Yes, yes. example. No. God heard God so. Uh, God heard. God heard. God saw that it was. Yeah. God touched. Yes. So that was indirectly referring to the fact that He has eyes that can see, He has ears yes, that, that can hear, and He's also able to touch and all that. So we've talked about how many have we mentioned so far? And God's hand. God's, God's eyes. Eyes. God's back. Back. God's hand. Hand. Finger. Finger, um, ear, ears. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we've mentioned we've mentioned God's quite food. a few. God's, God's right, hand. right hand. Is your hand different from your right hand? <laughs> no, it's not so. Say it's the robot. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah, that that must be a robot. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That must be a robot. I think yeah. it's robot. I, I, we think it's robots. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that must be robots. Yeah. Okay. So one type God's hand, then the other said. Mm -mm. Let's qualify it better. God's right hand. Mm. Because the Bible never talks about God's left hand. Mm. So it's God's right hand. Well done, well done. And right hand, we always say, means activity, means action, as we will, as we'll see. Okay, thank you, people. God's feet. For God's feet, it's okay. Safe. The earth is his footstool. The earth is his footstool. Imagine so, how great our God is, that this whole planet Earth is his footstool. Imagine a footstool in your house. One thing you that that thing you place your leg on, you place your feet on. That's what the earth looks like to God. Something like a small ball there. Now we know that the earth, is, the world is round, spherical, not flat. 
So it's just like a ball there, which he just places his feet on. That's how great our God is. And that tells me that his throne alone is bigger than the earth. Because the chair you sit on is always bigger than the yeah, stool you, you place your feet on. on. So just yeah. his chair, just his yeah. throne, his throne alone, God's throne. Think about it. This is the God you pray to to answer your prayers. Think about it. His throne alone is bigger than the whole earth. How awesome. How awesome. God's throne. Uh, Sakeji, do you have something else to say? Um, I, was, <laughs> I was going to say God's heart, sir. God's heart. Well done. Well done. Yes, yes. The Bible talks clearly. The Bible talks about God's heart. God's heart. My heart yearns within me. And, uh, I'm, I'm testing it now. I'm testing it myself. Yeah. Um, Surely, I have found a man to my own, after heart. My own, own heart. heart. Yes, yes, yes. We got there in the end. God's heart. God's heart. Thank you. Thank you. So we pretty much mentioned most of the body parts of God as we found in scripture. It relates to human. Now, what we're going to do next is we're now going to go into scripture because we've got scriptures for each of these body parts. In fact, on some of them, it means different things. And we're going to, God smile. Thank you. Thank you. God smile. As mentioned in scripture. Do you know a scripture about God smile? Lord has declared, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm being, I'm being like, it's push, pushing it down. My mouth, <laughs> my mouth has declared it. I think so. I think it's a scripture so, like that. My mouth, uh, that which has I, gone out, out of, of my, my mouth, mouth. yes, um, will fulfill what is said. That yes, yes. Yeah. and it will and not return to me void. And it will not return to me void. Yeah. Exactly. And then um, Deuteronomy chapter eight verse two, he suffered thee to hunger, that thou mayest know that man shall not live by bread alone. Mm -hmm. But by, by every word that, that proceeds out, out of, of the, the mouth, mouth of God. The mouth of God. Well done. Thank you, Sister Christian. How did we miss that? How did we forget that? God's mouth. God's mouth, which gives us his word. So we're going to go to scripture. And for each of these parts, we'll find the different meanings scripture ascribes to them. Because they're not all the same. Different meanings. There are some parts. In fact, you get to one, you'll be surprised to see that one can be positive and negative at the same time. Yeah. A lot of them are positive, so that's good. And like I said, that's to aid us in our in our prayers and to aid our knowledge so that we can pray more mm. intelligently. Oh okay. no, 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 sorry. Ha. I thought you cannot I use that one. <laughs> ah, then the Lord opened the mouth of the donkey. No, no, that's, that, that's donkey. That's not the word I'm looking for. Ah, okay, let's just be clear. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we're going to take this in turns. We'll read the scripture, and then somebody will tell us what that part means, what it does for us, and then we'll confirm whether that's true or not. Do you want to start us off? Yes, yeah, so we can start with God's, um, what we've been able to establish. We, we establish a, a lot of things, God's hand, God's arm, and all of that. And let's start with the, the hand or the arm of God. Okay. So it's either the hand, the whole hand, or yeah. the arm, the arm of God. And we know that the arm of God is the sovereign power, right, in creation. And his actions and uh, on behalf of pe on behalf of people, especially in redemption, God's hand is always saying God's hand. It's like is is it is like a symbol of authority, a symbol which God rescues his people. Yeah, and is an instrument of creation, like we know. Can can we look at Isaiah chapter forty eight? Isaiah forty eight. Isaiah forty eight, and from verse verse thirteen. Isaiah 48, verse 13. Let's have a look. So do you want to put it up? It says. So we read it. It says, I'll read it and then we ask. 
So it says, indeed, my hand has laid the foundation of the earth mm. and my right hand has stretched out the heavens. Mm. When I call to them, they stand up together. Right. So what, what's God's hand doing here, people? Let's, the let's, foundation. sorry. Laying, laying the, the foundation, foundation of the earth. Of the earth mm. Creating the earth. So we can see that God's hand there was the instrument of creation. creation. Yes. His hand created Heaven. And you, you know what came to my mind now? You know when a potter, you know yes. what God a potter, yeah, 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 yeah. you are molding the clay. Exactly. So the hand, and, and it's the same thing that God has given us to use our hands to create. To create. To create. That's so true. so he says, and he says, and I stretch them out and when I call to them and they stand up together. Mm. So this one here shows that God's right hand is used to, God's hand is used to create and as well as his right hand like um, Robert mentioned earlier, yeah. that is right, is right hand. So. so it's interesting, isn't it? His hand created the earth, earth his and right hand, hand stretched, stretched out, out the, the heavens. heavens. So the heavens and the earth were created by God's hand. In other places, you find God's word. In other places, you find God's breath. So it just means that the whole of God created the heavens and the earth. Okay, thanks for that. I'll take the next scripture. Um, Exodus 7 5. So, do you wanted to say something? Exodus 7 5. Hmm. Exodus 7. Exodus sorry. chapter 7, verse 5. Okay. What did the hand of the Lord do here? It says, And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord uh -huh. when I stretch out my hand on Egypt and bring out the children of Israel from amongst them okay so what has the hand of the lord done here anybody my my son just created a brand new english word called rescuation amazing 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 it's redemption or rescue rescue Rescue, read. <laughs> Auntie Keji is laughing at you. Mommy wanted to say something. Yes. Thank you. Oh, you've said it is because it, it rescues. So that's it. Uh, it rescues. And so saves. Yes, and saves redemption. Thank you. So, because it, you know, in scripture, Egypt or spiritual Egypt means the world. So when he says there that the Egyptians shall know I am the Lord, you can say, I'm the world shall know that I am the Lord when I stretch out my hand on the world and bring out my children from among them. So not just a physical Egypt, but also a spiritual Egypt. So it does talk about salvation. It talks about redemption. And we can see that it's the hand of God doing that too. You want to take the next? Yes. Yeah, so the hand of the Lord created. Yes. Don't forget that. Created. The hand of the Lord rescues. Rescues. And the third one we're going to look at the hand of the Lord. Let's let's look at Job chapter nineteen, mm -hmm. verse twenty one. Job nineteen twenty one. Job nineteen twenty one. And he says, "Have pity on me. Have pity on me, oh you my oh you my friends, for the hand of the Lord." has struck me oh dear what 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 can we see here people what what does what is the end of the lord doing here striking yes yeah so the end striking. of the lord struck hmm. struck that he struck that person and it's 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 uh, and person, it the, is the as in correction correction, correction. Yes. 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 Yeah. So we wrote instrument of, of punishment, punishment or trouble. Instrument of punishment or I think we add correction to that. Mm. Instrument of correction. Have pity on me. Now, this was a righteous man. Remember, this was Job, a righteous mm -hmm. man. Have pity on me. Have pity on me. Twice he repeated that for emphasis. All oh, you, my friends, for the hand of God. That's true. Has struck me. Wow. Pastor, you know, you wow. know, as we are reading this, you yes. know what came to my mind mm -hmm. is the fact in Genesis 1:26. Mm -hmm. It's like everything God does, mm -hmm. He created us in that image, and we do. Mm -hmm. And it's just to be able to do the things because God has hands, He created, yeah. He expects yeah. us to be creating. Yeah. 
he, he, he stretched out. He did, he uh, did what was it? He delivered. Mm. You know, we are meant to rescue others. others. Yes. Mm. And in a place where we need to give we correction, we to correct with our yeah. hands. Mm. So that that's the that's that's true. That's so true. Thank next you. One, yeah. And the next one is in Psalm 98, verse 1. Psalm 98, verse 1. Psalm 98, verse 1. Let's read that. Um, anybody want to read that for us? Psalm 98, mm -hmm. verse 1. Psalm 98, verse 1. Anybody? It says, it wants to read. Can you find it? It says, All sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gained him the victory. His right hand and his holy arm have gained him the victory. What did God's hand do for him here? Give victory. Give victory. He gave victory. So if we also have hands, what will God do for us through our own hands too? Do we get victory? We get victory. He will give us victory. So God's hand gave him victory. God's hand gave him victory. Okay. Um, let's go to Ezekiel 1 3. Ezekiel 1 3. Ezekiel chapter 1, verse. Three. Ezekiel chapter one, verse three. Ezekiel one, three. Lord of the Lord came expressly and says, Yeah, keep reading. Go on. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, sorry. The word of the Lord came expressly to Ezekiel the priest, the son of Boze, in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Cheva. And the hand of the Lord was upon him there. Mm, okay. This is in a roundabout way one. But what did the hand of the Lord do for him there? What, what, what did the upon, hand of the Lord do there? The hand of the Lord was upon him. Yes. No, hold on. Yeah. Why well, are you looking for a word? Like he protected him? Is that what you mean? No. So you started off where, yes, the hand of the Lord was upon him. Oh, and yeah. what did that what did that result in? Which is right at the start of the sentence. The, the word of the Lord. The so word came of the Lord, yeah. Exactly. So it came expressly to him, yeah. Okay. Exactly. Because the hand of the Lord was upon him, the word of the Lord right. came expressly, expressly to him. So it's an instrument of revelation. So we've said the hand of the Lord is an instrument of creation instrument of deliverance, instrument of correction, instrument of victory, instrument of revelation. And um, we've got a few more like instrument of success, instrument of protection, and I added one this evening, instrument of authority, instrument of authority. So these are eight things out of, many, out of many, out of many, which the Bible says the hand of the Lord represents. So if you are praying for success or victory, what should you be praying or revelation? Lord, let your right hand rest upon me. Rest upon me, amen. If you are praying amen. for deliverance, Lord, lay your right hand upon me. Upon me yes. If you are praying for success, victory, if you are praying, if, if you want to create something, maybe you, you are thinking of a business idea. You want to create something unique in your own generation. And that, what business should I go to? You can say, Lord, lay your hands upon me yes. for revelation okay. and for creation. The victory. And victory, of course. You know, there's always a prayer we pray for people in the hospital. We're like, Lord, as doctors go to death, lay your hands. May the hands of the doctors become the hand of God. Mm, God. Because when God lays his hand upon you, you get healed. Yes. You know, may the hands of the doctors become the hands of God. So that as they touch you, 
as they touch that person, that person may heal. So we can see so many benefits of knowing what the hand of the Lord can do. And when we pray, we then pray specifically for these things. Okay. Moving on because of time. That's probably the one that is most extensive. The others are shorter. So um, we'll move on to the next one. What's the next one, Lali? So the next one is the finger of God. The finger, finger of God. Of yeah. God. yeah. And, and, and like we said, that the, 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 the hand of God re represents authority, represents power. So is the finger of God, mm. you know, and it does, it does, it did so many things. You could say the finger of God did this, the finger of God. And even for the, the a few things that happened, like the Ten Commandments, giving of the Ten Commandments, you know, it was the finger of God that did it. And, you know, yesterday when we were talking about this and I thought, so the finger of God wrote all of those Ten Commandments mm -hmm. and delivered it unto Moses. But I'm going ahead of myself here. Let's read. Deuteronomy chapter 9, Deuteronomy chapter 9, right. verse 10, mm -hmm. Deuteronomy 9, verse 10, as we, are as, as we turn there, you know what came to my mind, sir, when you said, you know, that the throne of God mm. is bigger than his footstool, yeah. so really, the finger of God is ah. just, you know, it's, it's, ah. it's, 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 how, how awesome, yeah, how awesome the finger of God will be. be. And you know, like somebody once said, he said, God is so big that the earth is his footstool, and yet he dwells in, in our hearts. hearts yeah. How? How can a God so great, mm. whose throne alone is larger than the earth, then dwell in our hearts mm. as human beings? It's a privilege. It's a privilege. Deuteronomy chapter 9, nine verse, 10. verse 10. I'll read. Then it says, Then the Lord said to me two tablets of stone written with the finger of God. Wow. And on them were all the words which the Lord had spoken to you on the mountain from the midst of the fire in the day of the assembly. Hmm. Pastor, you, you, you know what I see here? Mm -hmm. Apart from the fact that those two tablets, you, Moses was on that mountain for 40 days. For 40 days. So does it mean that everything God spoke? He said, and the words mm. which the Lord had spoken to you. So which means in that initial 10 commandments, mm. it was more than 10 commandments. Yeah, 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 of course. You know? Yeah. So it says the finger of God yeah. wrote it. Yeah. And yeah. it's just so amazing that what the finger of God could of do God. right yeah. on a... On a what? On a tablet, on a tablet of stone. Of stone. Mm. Mm. On a tablet of stone. Mm. That's so true. So the finger of God, the finger of God wrote um, the Ten Commandments, like you said, and more, yeah. and delivered it to Moses. Okay. So what else has the finger of God done? What else? Uh, it takes record. Ah, well, thank you. Uh, we were looking for a way of summarizing that. The finger of God takes record. You know, I was going to go into the scripture now. Everything you see in Exodus chapter 19, Exodus chapter 20, and on. There were things that God spoke. But here we learn that he did not only speak it, mm. but he also wrote it. So we know where Exodus 19, 20 comes from. And as he applies to us, the finger of God takes record. God is recording everything we are doing in his book. He is recording all that we are doing. That's why we can't just do things willy-nilly. We've got to be careful what we, what we do. Okay, look at Luke, Luke chapter 11, verse 20. Luke 11, verse 20. Now, we know Jesus was God on earth, God in earth human flesh we know that was all who jesus was and this is what jesus had to say about himself as it relates to this luke 11 verse, verse 20. 20 please read if i cast out demons with the finger of god mm. surely the kingdom of god has come upon you right what did the finger of god do here hmm. anyone drive out the demons cast out, out demons, demons. The finger of God cast out demons. 
So before you lay your hands on anybody, I better pray, Lord, turn my fingers into the finger of God. May my hand become the hands of God. And then it is not you casting out the devils. It is the finger of God. So it represents again power and authority over, the, over spiritual forces. The finger of God represents power power and authority over spiritual forces. Jesus said, if I by the finger of God, God, finger of God, cast out demons. Can you imagine how many evil spirits there are? And yet just by God's finger alone, he sends them back in. That's how great, that, that's how great our God is. And I think that relates to the next one, which is Exodus, Exodus 18. 8, 18 to 19. Exodus 8, 18 to 19. Exodus 8, 18 to 19. Uh -huh. right. Yes, please. It says, now the magicians so worked with their enchantments to bring forth, forth lies, mm -hmm. but they could not. They could not. Yeah. Okay. So there were lies on man and beast. Okay. Then the magician said to Pharaoh, uh -huh. this is the finger of God. Wow. But Pharaoh's heart grew hard and he did not heed them just as the Lord had said. Right. Okay. So, so what did the finger of God do here? Performing quote unquote magic. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I like that. It's always good to have young people on this floor. They just <laughs> mesmerize you with their answers. My son says, performing quote and unquote magic. <laughs> um, this is more miracles. Mm. You know, miracles can be positive, it can be negative. But it's still a miracle. Oh. Yeah. Because the magicians could not do it. The magicians God could not did do it. it. Yeah. But God did so it. And did the lies it. was also on the magician. You know, anything God did before, they copied. But this time, God wanted to punish them so they couldn't produce lies. And the lies which affected people affected them. And they said to Pharaoh, This is the, the finger, finger of God. <laughs> The finger of God is an instrument of judgment upon his enemies. An instrument of judgment upon his enemies. So, like we all, like you, you've been, you know, what we've been saying is, so when when you are faced with a challenge, you mm. can ask God that Lord, may your finger be against my enemies. Yes, yes. You know, and God will. He says, "I will fight your battles and mm. you will hold your peace." So we can ask God, like, Lord, may your finger, like you did in this, mm -hmm. in this, um, to the to the children of, to to the Madur in Egypt, to the magicians, may your fingers be upon my enemies. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Over his enemies. Okay, thank you for that. So let's go to the next one then. That's, that's all that's all we we're able to find out about the finger of the Lord. Now, before we check these next scriptures, let me just ask, let's, let's just ask this question. The face of the Lord. Think about a human face. Or your face. Um, I'm just saying your face. My face. Yeah, you said human. Yeah. Okay. I don't want them to think about my own face. Okay, all right. <laughs> oh no, think about her own face. I mean, her face is beautiful. Her face is good. And think about her face. Not well, don't think about my face. Think about her face. So think, think about a human face. Yeah. Think about the expressions that come from the face. Just think. Think about the expression. Now, before we start going into scripture, what do we think the face of God would then represent? The face of God. What do you think that will represent? You just, I think you, I, when, when you say, I don't know, this is just, when you were saying the face of the Lord, number one, I, it's, my mind just went straight to the face of the Lord shines upon me. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, and then when you think about human being, human being are funny. When you look at someone's face, it could be anything. Dirty look, I fancy you, you look nice. Um, why are you doing that? It could be anything, but because God is a merciful God, mm -hmm. mm. Mm. you know, is you know, he, His face continues to shine upon us. I don't know that that mm. I don't yes. know. Yes, yes, spot I'm on. lost. Spot on. No, no, no. Spot on. Spot on, Sister KG. Spot on. Mercy, mercy, 
mercy. The face of God represents mercy. Now let's go find out. Let's journey of discovery into scripture. What does the Bible say about the face of God? And I, I love all those kind of, when you say dirty looks and all that stuff. How do we relate that to God doesn't give dirty looks to people, does it? No, but you, you nailed it. And that's why he's not human. That's why he's different from us. Mercy. Hosea chapter 5, verse 15. Hosea 5, 15. Yeah. Hosea 5, it's 15. 15, yes. I will return. Oh, thank you, Sister Christiana. Compassion. Okay, yes, go on. I will return again to my place till mm -hmm. they acknowledge their offense. Okay. Then they will seek my face in their affliction. They will mm -hmm. earnestly seek me. Mm -hmm. They will seek my face in their affliction. They will earnestly, they will earnestly seek me. So, yes, what would they be seeking the Lord for? For his, his face. Fa his face, for his mercy, for his mercy. Okay. But, but Pastor, I, I think this one, though, it says, I will return again to my place. Yeah. Just like anytime we go away, where anytime we sin and our sin separates us from God, mm -hmm. God withdraws. He withdraws. But he's, he withdraws to and, 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 um, encourage us encouraging to, us to return. To him, to to return. return. Yeah. So he doesn't withdraw mm. and withdraw completely. Mm. God is always waiting for mm. us to come to him. Yeah. He says, I will return again to my place mm. till they acknowledge the office. Then they will seek my face. Seek and my in other face. places, he said, once you seek my face, I will turn. Exactly. I will turn to you. So Whether God is always asking me, for I will leave no wise cast away. So he wants us to come to him. Yeah. So that mm -hmm. shows he's merciful. Thank you. Psalm 80, verse 3. Psalm 80, verse 3. Um, there was, I think it was last year, we were praying through. Every time we pray in church, we pray with scriptures. We always pray with scriptures. Our prayer. So if you join us on a corporate prayer, for example, everyone leading prayers will use scriptures. And this was one of the ones that... Um, that it was Robert leading us in prayers. It was at a, one of our night videos, and he led us in prayers from Psalm 80. And that really, really blew my mind. And that's where the scripture comes from. What does Psalm 80, verse 3 say? Psalm 80, verse 3. Restore us, O God. Restore us, O God. Cause your face to shine, and we shall be saved. Mm. Restore mm. us, O God. Like Cause your face to shine. And we shall be saved. So when God's face shines upon us, what does that bring to us? Restoration. 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 We get restored when his face shines upon us. You know, when a man's face shines upon a lady, it could be, I like you. But God's face is better. You know, God's face brings mercy. God's face brings restoration. Ration. And this popular one, we, we, we must read it. Um, uh, <laughs> okay, uh, we've got the comments there. Let's give it go. God can give a dirty look, um, for example, to builders of the Tower of Babel, Nebuchadnezzar, <laughs> and Herod, and Pharaoh. I totally agree. Those people had dirty looks from God. He was like, I'm out to get you and all that. So thank you, ma'am. We agree. We 100% agree with that. This scripture is popular. If I sent it to somebody who's birthday, who had a birthday yesterday. Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 oh. to 25. Oh. It's called the priestly, priestly prayer. Blessing, blessing. The priestly prayer. God himself instructed Moses that this is Aaron. how Aaron should pray. Okay for the people and some churches at the end of their service will declare this on themselves before they leave and what does he say he says the lord bless you and keep you number 6 24 to 25 the lord bless you and keep you the lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you 
the Lord lift up his countenance, still talking about his face, lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Wow, awesome. wow. Awesome way to end the service. Awesome way to dispatch God's people when they have been in fellowship. An so, awesome way to, to round up our individual prayers. Yes. When we pray, when we go to God, we've That's asked true. him to raise his hands of victory. Yes. To, we've asked him to, you know, to, to grant us, to show his face mm -hmm. to us. And he said, may the Lord bless me. Mm -hmm. May the Lord keep me. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon me. I upon. think it's a, it's a good um, scripture that we can memorize. Yes, and, yes. And you know, we say to ourselves, to ourselves, he has a love. He has a lot of, he said, the Lord be gracious to you. It's, it's, and then the Lord lift up his countenance and all of it, all of the, all of those individual blessings mm -hmm. talks about favor. Yes. It's just favor. Favor. Yeah. favor. So we've seen his mercy. We've seen his restoration. We've seen his favor all in his face. Mm -hmm. So you can go to God and say, Lord, me, instead of saying, Lord, grant me favor. Lord, grant me mercy. Lord, grant me restoration. <laughs> That's the prayer of a baby Christian. <laughs> I said, Lord, make your face shine upon me. Lord, lift up your countenance. Upon me. You know what that means? It just means, Lord, smile at me. You know, because when God smiles at you, even if darkness is around, sunshine will come. When God smiles at you, you have won his favor. And that's a prayer we should, and like you said, that's such a powerful way to round up even our own personal prayers. Lord, bless me and keep me. Lord, make your face to shine upon me and be gracious to me. Lord, lift up your countenance upon me and give me peace. You pray that kind of prayer. You stand up, you go your way, everything begins to fall in place for you. Yes, amen. Yes. Because you are now enjoying his mercy, mm. his restoration, and his favor all rolled into one. Okay. Are we going to talk about his yeah. eyes, nose, <laughs> and mouth, ears separately? Of course we are. Of course we are. We're going to, we've talked about his, his next ears time. already. So we've talked about, no, actually, we've talked about his hand, his finger, his face. And now, you know, ah, well, mommy, you're so in the spirit. Because the next three is the eyes of the Lord, the ears of the Lord, the nose of the Lord. And then the mouth of mm. the Lord is also there. So let's go to talk about, after the face of the Lord, we're now going to break down the components of the face. You know, when you look at a human face again, eyes are there, nose is there, mouth is there, ear is there, brain is there. Well, we don't see the brain from the face to you here. So we're going to talk about the things that we see and what they also represent. So let's talk about the eyes of the Lord. The eyes of the Lord. Does anyone know a scripture that talks about the eyes of the Lord or what the eyes of the Lord may represent. I use the word may because it might be different. For you, you might have a different inspiration in terms of the eyes of the Lord. What do we think the eyes of the Lord represents? Sister Keji quoted the scripture, I am the apple of God's eye. You might think of that for another scripture. What does the eyes of the Lord represent? And do you know a scripture or any other scripture that talks about the eyes of the Lord? Anybody? Uh, for the, <laughs> excuse me, I don't want to, for the eyes of the Lord, um, I'm trying to Stop sing. on the righteous. <laughs> From the eye on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their prayer. Well, the uh, of the Lord, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Spot on. <laughs> Spot on. First Peter 3.12. That's it. Thank, Thank you. First Peter 3.12. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. The righteous and, and his ears, ears are open. Psalm 33, 18. Psalm 33, 18. verse 18. Okay. What does it say? Let's check. Let's check. Psalm 33, verse 18. We'll come back Charlie, to... Go on. Shall the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him. 
Wow. Thanks. Second Chronicles 16, 9. Well For the done. eyes of the Lord roam, roam to and fro over all the earth mm. to show himself strong. Thank you. On behalf you. of them whose heart is, yeah. Lawyer. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, Proverbs 15, 3. The eyes of the Lord are in every place observing the evil and mm. good people. Wow. Wow. Place, yeah. In the eyes of the Lord, Proverbs 15, 3. Yes, Proverbs no, 15, 3. No, 33, 18. No, there's, there's own, Proverbs the 15, 3 first, yeah. and then there's Proverbs 33, 18. Job 34, 21. See, I mean, I'm writing this. Job 34, 21. Please read. Job 34, 21. Job 34, 21. We've now read that. Let's see what he says. He says, for his eyes are on the ways of man mm. and he sees all his steps. Wow. Mm. His eyes it's are true. on the ways of man and he sees... He's frozen. Sorry? He uh, we... says he's frozen in her are place. We... Are, are we, we frozen? frozen? No, we are, we are not. We've okay, been all right. doing that all, all over for a long time in my place. Uh, Psalm 34, 15 say, God watches over the righteous and answers their cry for help. Amen. Mm -hmm. He delivers Psalm the righteous from their troubles and draws near to them. Did you say Psalm 34, 15, ma'am? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, Psalm 34, verse 15. So... What then, having read all of these scriptures, what then does the eyes of the Lord represent to us as a people, as, as, as saints? So the, the, the eyes of the Lord, we can see that he watches over. It's like God so one, watches over. He says his eyes are on the righteous. Yes. His eyes run to and fro. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, it, and it, his eyes doesn't just look at the righteous. He sees everything. So even when the righteous go astray, the Lord can see mm -hmm. and all that. So his right, his eyes are all over. And he says here in that first Peter 3, 12, he says, but the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Mm -hmm. So we can see that though his eyes are on the righteous yeah. who are doing his will, but when it comes, when he look at evil people, then his, his, his eyes is not favorable towards them. That's true. Yeah. So the eyes of the Lord talks about the help and support yeah. available to us as believers. The help and support available to us as believers. God's eyes monitor. So I, I love that. One of my favorite scriptures, all time, all time favorite, is 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro the whole earth. So yes, we know he sees all things according to Job. But why? To show himself strong on behalf of those who ha whose heart is loyal to him. To show himself strong. You know what? God is scanning the earth to find solutions to your problems. When you pray to him, he sends out his scanners. Boom, 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 boom. Where would that solution come from? Oh, that person is on, on in Australia. They need to travel to the UK and all that. And they need to come to Raynham and all that so they can meet with Vincent and solve his problem. That's what the eyes of the Lord does. Where you cannot get to, the eyes of the Lord goes there and brings the solution to where you are. He says, oh. run to and flow through the whole earth to show himself strong, oh, oh, to okay. show that he is able to deliver, to show that he's able to provide help, to show that he's able to provide support, security, security. security. Yeah. exactly, to his children. But we also know that his eyes are out there also to punish those who are doing evil. Yes, if we if we only mention the eye of the Lord today, we can we may have to stop there. Yes, <laughs> because there are so many, of so course. many. Hebrews four thirteen says, and there is no creature hidden from His sight, mm. but mm. all things are 
open and laid bare to the eyes of him to whom we must answer. We must answer. Jeremiah is still the same. It says, Jeremiah 16, 17, my eyes are on all their ways. They are not hidden from my face. Mm. Nor is their wrong do doing concealed from my eyes. So there are so God many scriptures sees. talking about mm. the eyes of he the Lord. He sees everything. Yeah. And for the righteous, he provides help and support for the wicked. He either punishes or corrects immediately, or he stores what he has seen against the day of judgment. That's what the eyes of the Lord does. Yes, ma'am. So I guess the question for me is, so the eyes of the Lord sees everything. Yes. So which means, where he says in Abacook, I think it's in Abacook 113. Yes that God is of purer height mm. than to behold iniquity. Yes. He says, I cannot look upon wickedness. Mm. So which means if the, even though the eyes of the Lord is over all, and especially on the righteous, trying to show himself strong on Abia, mm -hmm. once we go into sin, ah. it shows that God, God's eyes, ah, even though he's taking off take us. It off us mm. Mm. Because if he's saying he's of a place to behold iniquity, yes. God knows, yes, that my son is there, but I can't mm -hmm. behold him because you know it's just like somebody closing his eyes, yeah. and you know that that person is there, but because it's of a purer eyes mm. than to behold that iniquity, yeah. that eye is taking us from us momentarily That's true. until we come back to him. Oh, correct. Ever so correct. And I'll back that up by a scenario in scripture. Psalm 22. And then, of course, Matthew, Mark, Luke. I don't think it's in John. Remember what Jesus said on the cross? My father, my father, why have you forsaken me? me? Why did he say that? Because on the cross, he became sin for us. According to Romans, he became sin for us who knew no sin. He who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. When Christ became sin for us, God had to turn his eyes away because his eyes are too pure to behold sin. And for the first time in all eternity, remember? Jesus and God had been in existence before the world was created. For the first time in all eternity, there was a separation between the Father and the Son. There was a separation between God and the Word. A separation. And Jesus saw that and Jesus cried out. Because he had never experienced that before. My Father, my Father, why have, as in, we agreed that I will come and redeem man. Why would you forsake me now? But God cannot break his principle. He had to look away. Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 13. You have purer eyes than to behold evil and cannot look on wickedness. God had to turn away. And like you said, when we then double into sin, the eyes that is on us to provide help and support turns away. That's why I always say it is for our benefit when God says, be holy. Mm. It's for our, it's not for his benefit. He is holy already. It's for our benefit because his eyes turns away. It creates opportunity for the enemy to attack us. It creates opportunity for our prayers not to be answered. There's just so much to lose when we double into sin. So yes, so many things we can learn from the eyes of love. Thank you for all the other scriptures you have given, which we didn't even have in our notes, but which we have duly, duly recorded, which we have duly recorded. Okay, that's the eyes of the Lord. Should we, should we take the nose? I think we've mentioned some of the, no, the ears. ears. No, no, oh, no, we still need to take the ears um, of the Lord. The ears of, because that also represents different things, actually. The ears of the Lord. What does the ear do naturally? Let's start from the natural before we go into the spiritual. Anybody? He listens. Listens for those who want to listen. The ear listens for those who, 
I like, I like that choice. Yeah, for some people, you know. Listen. Yeah. So okay, okay. My my, my son says hear, hear, but they don't listen. What's the difference then between hearing and listening? Tolu. Um, hearing is passively observing what the other um, person is saying, but uh, listening is actively um, actively taking in the information the other person. Is right. Saying. Hearing is passive observance of sound. So let me make it because I'm older than him. Let me make it slightly more. You know. Hearing is <laughs> a passive observance of sound. It could be what somebody is saying, it could be music, it could be, you know, just where you are right now, where you are right now, there is some noise around you, which you are either hearing or ignoring, or you are not hearing at all, but they're there. And all of that, it, it happens everywhere. Listening though, is an active observer yeah. of sound. Mm -hmm. So when somebody is talking and you are listening, that's an active mm -hmm. observer. Is a skill. Mm -hmm. And then when you when you take that into marriage, when you take that into marriage, you start off by listening. And then when somebody says something, when your spouse says something, your partner says something, and you don't like what they've said, then you start building up your answer. You are working on your answer. And at that, stop, at that point, you stop listening. Mm -hmm. You're just hearing. You stop listening because you are busy crafting <laughs> your answer. <laughs> so they said, uh, so well, you came, home, you you came home yesterday. You came home yesterday at 7 p.m. And, and, and when you came home, you didn't say hello. In your mind, you're like me. Sam, who came home? Sam? I came home six p.m. A whole hour. So you forgot. So you are crafting that how you are going to prove how long that you came home six, not seven. And everything else she says or he says, huh? you are not listening anymore. You're, you're hearing. just hearing. You said why only in marriage? Any other? It could be in any other. Yeah, in the class. In the class. In the class, oh, yes. and all that in church, you know, in church, <laughs> you know, one pastor, one pastor came to our church, and he said, he said, guys, um, I've been advocating. This is he saying that he said, I've been advocating that people should go back to paper Bibles, you know. And he said, he said, the reason being, he said, we can all access the Bible on our phones and things like. This. He said that's good. Okay. He said, but sometimes, just as you're looking at your phone, accessing that message, one message just comes in. Yep. Yeah. Via WhatsApp or message yeah. or something, it just notification, it just comes in yeah. and you stop listening. Yeah. You start hearing, you yeah. stop listening because that message has distracted, distracted you. you. Yes, definitely. Yeah. But if you were looking at a paper Bible, <laughs> a notification will not come into your Bible. Or you can still be distracted. Distracted, yeah. Your mind still be distracted, yeah? but it is less likely. But it's very, yeah, exactly, very less likely. That Absolutely. you will be distracted. Now, let me tell you how yeah. you can be distracted through your paper Bible. So, for me, when um, when I was in church years ago, before I became a pastor, when I'm listening to a message, when someone's preaching and I'm listening to a message, um, I am actively listening. But if something hits me. Like if something drops in my spirit until I reason that out and really, really get in, I don't hear anything else. So I just take that to us. So let me give you an example. A sister once came to church and she was into, it was this time when network marketing was everywhere. Everyone was doing it. And then she came to church and she said, praise the Lord. The Lord has helped me clear my debts. You know, all my debts, I've paid it and all that. He said, because what I realized is God will not come down from heaven and solve your financial problem. You need to do something yourself. Now, at that time, I didn't have time for network marketing or anything else. I was busy. When she said that thing, that thing hit me like a thunderbolt. And I said, but Lord, so those of us who don't have time for things like this are stuck. 
So unless we get a miracle, our death will continue. So I said, Lord, prove what this sister have said. Prove it wrong in my life. Everything else she said, I didn't hear. And guess what? Within a matter of three months, God sent a miracle. Without me doing network marketing, God sent a miracle which cleared my debts. And then that reinforced for me the message that, yes, God can open a pathway for you to do something. But if you are truly stuck and there is no way, God can do things through other means. We can't box God into a con or one way of doing, of doing things. So the ears of the Lord, ability to hear and to listen. Any other okay. thing the ear does? Yes, when, it's just, um, I guess, those are the two. When, when, when we call on God. Detects. detects. Hmm. The ear detects. You know, if a blind man is in a room, his sense of hearing is heightened. Yes. Mm. You know, it's like dogs. Dogs can hear things that humans cannot. Yeah, yeah. Because their ears are so, their sense of smell, I, I don't think dog, dogs have good eyes, but their sense of smell and hearing is, is like a thousand times better than that of human beings. Eagles and vultures, on the other hand, can see a fish swimming in the sea. Yeah. Now, a vulture way up like 50 miles away or whatever miles, I don't know, 50 miles away can see. A vulture will sit there hoping that some other birds will catch that fish, eat the fish and leave the bone so they can feed on it. An eagle will swoop down and pick up that fish, go even though you can see it from. An eagle will go for it. That's the difference between an eagle. So yes, ear detects. Now let's see whether what's in scripture aligns with all of those things when we talk about the ears of the Lord. The yes, ears my Lord. words, oh Lord, consider, I love that scripture. That's where I named my son from. Okay. What, what scripture is that? Psalm 5. Psalm 5. Okay, let's Verse go there. One. Let's go there. Psalm 5, verse 1. Psalm 5, verse 1. Give, what does he say? Give ear to my words, O Lord, Lord. Consider my meditation. Hmm. And, and, and I think I, I, I like the scripture because it just syncs with what we're talking about, Sakeji. And he, hear my meditation. My meditation is not something I'm talking about. Yes. It's something I'm brooding over. Hmm. So the Lord oh. detects, is that, yeah. So it does not only hear what we say. It, it considers our meditation. Yeah, our meditation as well. Because wow. the Lord knows our thoughts, just to add to that as well. So mm -hmm. we make sure that our thoughts are in line with the word of God. Thank you. Thank you for that balance, Mr. Gage, because if my meditation is a prayer, or if it is in line with his will, as we'll see in a moment, in a moment that's good, isn't it? Yeah. What happens when my meditation is Some dodgy? Way. Some way dodgy. <laughs> On those ones, we don't want the Lord to see, but we have said that he sees everything. So even the thoughts in our hearts are not hidden, are not hidden to him. So thank you, Sister Keji. Psalm 5, verse 1. Give ear, detect my words, O oh Lord, consider my meditation my meditation thank you now other scriptures so, 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 so can i just add a little bit to that sir? go on please I, I i love that verse so much i named my son as you can see he's allotted to me which means oh. god listened yes i named my son from some so oh, that's wow. you know he's not just um hearing that but also a lot of the time just like you said earlier i know you said he has a job but he's so way where our prayer is so fast now that we don't even take time to listen to God anymore. You yeah. know, we just say blah, 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 and that's it. In Jesus' yeah. name, amen. But you know, when you say give ears, you know, the, 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 this, the specification of that word give means take your time, Lord, and hear me. And then for you to also sit down and listen to what God has to say compared to what you have asked God. Mm. So it's always good for us, you know, not just to, to hear, but also to listen. As, in, as someone who works in NHS, I always like to listen to my patient. When they tell me, 
I think I want to push this baby. I want to pre me. They want to push. So I've got to listen to them. Mm. Not just hear them because I'm experienced midwife, but also to listen because they know their body as well. So I just That's thought I true. had to that. That's true. Thank you. That's true. And, and, and you know, sometimes the English language does not give With weight With. or color or richness to words. But when you consider those words in other cultures, uh, it, the English man is meant to be boring, you know, in what uh, the, 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 that, that, that's the that's the view of an Englishman, you know. But when you take that word, when you take it into a rich culture, a culture rich in language, it just so it just so brings it alive. So, like Sister Keji said, although the scripture says, give ear, O Lord. Um, to my words, give ear to my words, oh Lord, consider my meditation. In the language she has used to name her son, he says something like, Lord, leave everything you are doing and come and pay attention to my words. And you see the difference? English says, give word, give ear. But a rich culture, a rich language says, Lord, leave all you're doing and come and keep attention, pay attention to my words. And I think that's the first thing there, which we know God does. He hears our prayers. Yep. That's one of the things the ears of the Lord does. He hears our prayers. The, hear, the, the ears of the Lord um, talks about his ability to hear uh, prayers and if you read second samuel 22 7 um it talks about the same in my distress i called upon the lord and cried out to my god he heard my voice from his temple and my cry entered his ears my cry my prayers entered his ears but that's not the only thing that's not the only thing god hears that's not the only thing god hears what else does god hear he hears our pains. He hears our pains. Have you ever been in pain so much that you can't even pray? Or pray about it? You know, we all have... Well, well, yeah. uh, may, you not, may, you ne may you never get to that point in Jesus' name. You know, uh, is there any scripture to back that up? Um, some, no, Exodus, Exodus 3, verse 7. Exodus chapter 3, verse 7. Exodus chapter 3, verse 7. I think we'll stop on the ear of the Lord today. And, says, and, and the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression I have seen. of my people who are in Egypt, mm -hmm. and I've heard their cry because of their taskmaster, for I know their sorrows. Aha. Aha. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yep. Yeah. So what, what, what did he do there? He hears our pain. pain. He had their cry. Yeah. The children of Israel were in praying to the Lord. Most of them by this time had become idol worshippers. You know, 430 years in Egypt had had its effect on them. But when they groaned, when they cried out to the yeah. Lord, when they cried out out of their the pain, pain, he had them. I think there's somewhere in scripture where he says he stores our tears in his bottle. Yeah. You know? Our prayers are not just what we say to him. Our prayers, especially as righteous people, or where there is an injustice, our prayers are also the situation we are going through. He considers, is now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above, above all above that we can do. Ask or think. Or think. Anything we're able to ask. So you might not even be able to ask, but you are thinking it in your mind. Ah, if only I can get out of this situation. And God is turning that into prayers on your behalf. Especially the Holy Spirit is turning that into prayers on your behalf. Remember, I think it's Romans chapter 8, where it says, We know, we know not how we ought to pray, but the Spirit of the Lord searches our hearts. And he who knows the mind of God aligns 
the thoughts of our hearts in line with the will of God. So God turns our groans, our pains, our tears, our sorrows, he turns them into prayers and he answers and he answers them. Okay. Um, Should we do the last one there? So it's, let's um, do two. There are two more things there in terms of what God... Uh, oh. Okay, ma'am, go for it. First Peter 3, 12 yes. says, but the eyes, for the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open unto their prayers. Yes. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Hmm. Eyes is there, ears is there. And, and the face is there too. Yes. And the face is there too. Exactly, exactly. So again, he says the ears are open to their prayers. Yes. So we see what the ears of the Lord does. So last two, and then we'll end up for tonight on the ears of the Lord. God also hears everything rebellious people say about him. You know when people just cast their tongue to say <laughs> rubbish things about God and <laughs> oh, you believe in God, <laughs> whatever. Laugh at him, say things, oh, all those people who, uh, you know, the whatever. People who despise believers because of their faith. God hears all of those things. And at the right time, he judges men for it. That's in Isaiah 37, 29. Isaiah 37, 29. And I'll leave you to share the last one, which is a positive. So but Isaiah 37, 29. He says, because your rage against me and your tumult have come up to my ears, You've said all what you want to say about me. You've said all kinds of negative things about me. What will he do? He says, therefore, I will put my hook, my hook in your nose and my bridle in your leaves, and I will turn you back by the way you have come. God was talking about the king of Assyria here when he attacked Hezekiah. You know, he sent his servants to say, oh, he said, who is the God who will deliver you out of my hand? Just like Nebuchadnezzar. Who, you know, these things, they don't learn from one another. They don't learn from history. That's why they repeat history. We too, if we don't learn from history, we repeat history. He had said all of these things. And then God said, because of your rage against me and your tumult have come up to my ears, I'll put my hook in your nose and my bridle in your lips and I will turn you back. By the way, you came. And you know what God did? 175,000 soldiers slept and never woke up. Hezekiah didn't need to fight. The king woke up the next morning. Everyone was dead. He ran, ran for his dear life back to his own country. And then when he got back home, he went into the house of his God. And whilst he was complaining, why didn't you help me? The God of the Israelites helped them. They killed 175,000 of my soldiers. And you were just sitting here like a rock. You are not doing anything. His own God got angry. And two of his sons came in and killed him there. God listens to everything people say about him. And that's why we must be careful in terms of what we say. But this is more towards unbelievers. And we can only ask God to have mercy on them. Final one, and then we close. And I think, um, thank you, Pastor, for that. I think God hears everything we say, either evil or good. Hmm. And like we said, in, in Malachi 3.16, Malachi 3, chapter 16, the last um, scripture for today, Malachi 3.16, it says, then those who fear the Lord... Hmm spoke to one another mm. and the Lord listened and mm. heard them. So Just like a, we're doing tonight. Tonight, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So a book of remembrance was written before him for those who feared the Lord and who meditate on his name. So like we've heard that God heard what, you know, um, the, the king said and when he was, you know, reproaching the Lord, he here is saying that when we come together, 
when we listen, when we you know talk together with the Bible, we discuss the word, word of God, yeah. when we share testimonies, when we pray, when we come together, righteous people, hmm. he says the Lord listened and heard them. So he didn't just hear, hmm. he listened and he heard them. And a book of remembrance was written mm. for though before before him for those who for fear him who fear. and who yeah. meditate mm. upon his name. Mm. So when we come together and talk about God, a book of remembrance, our name yeah. is put in that book of remembrance, Hallelujah. which uh, the Lord the 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 Lord will um, the, the Lord has in 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 His hand. Yeah. So it's it's good for us to talk about good things God has done. You know, it's most of the time we Christians, we go to God most of the time for the things we need. Yeah. You know, like we prayed yesterday, we've been fasting and praying as a church and we prayed yesterday and we took time to praise God. Yes. Thank God, you know, yesterday for, for mom who led us, we took time to praise God. Praise and God. I believe that that has been, that has been written in the book of remembrance. Amen. That, you know, they praised, we praised God. We really praised him. So let's be careful what we say, especially about God. And when we come together as believers, let's, let's encourage one another. Let's speak the word of God to one another because God hears and he listens. Amen. Thank you. And just on that yes. book of remembrance, you know, Think about it in scripture. Everywhere the Bible says, and the Lord remembered a name. It's always, especially when it comes to his children, it's always good news. Mm. And the Lord, Lord remembered, remembered Sarah. Sarah. And, and the Lord remembered, remembered Rachel. Anna. And the Lord remembered Rebecca. And the Lord remembered Hannah. And the Lord remembered no. Elizabeth. No. Yeah, and the Lord remembered Noah, and the Lord remembered what he had said to Abraham. Mm -hmm. Every time the Lord remembers. So when he says a book of remembrance remember. was written, God just lists our name down as people he will remember. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing you get is, and the Lord remembered Blossom. Amen. And the Lord remember Chirma. And the Lord Amen. remember Christiana. Amen. And Amen. the Lord remember RT and B. Amen. And the Lord remember my family. Amen. And the Lord remember the wonderful people on Facebook. Amen. And the Lord remembers everyone who will listen or who have joined us tonight. Amen. That will be our portion because we have come together to talk together about God and about his goodness in our lives. Amen. Next week, we will continue with the other um, body parts. We've got the nose, the breath, the feet, the wings, the mouth, the feet, the back, the, back, the shoulder, the shoulder <laughs> and the voice of God. All of these we will look at next week. We trust we trust that you found this session really, really useful. And you can use these scriptures to pray for yourself. You know what they represent now. Yeah. You need to then use them to pray for yourself. You need to use them to pray for yourself. And as we round up tonight, we're just going to round up exactly with that priestly blessing that God asked Aaron. It was God who asked Aaron to pray it over the people. Let's pray, people. I pray tonight, may the Lord bless you Amen. and keep you. Amen. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. Amen. Amen. May the Lord be gracious unto you. Amen. Amen. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you. Amen. Amen. And may he give you peace in Amen. all that you do. Amen. In the name of his holy son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank, thank you, you for thank coming you. tonight. Thank you, thank you. Great to have you as always. And thanks for all your contributions tonight. Thank have you. a good evening. Please continue to invite people, mm. ask people to join from the comfort of their own homes. They can join anywhere just in anywhere in the world. They can log in and they can have fellowship with us and with the Father. 
as we have done tonight. And in Book of Remembrance, their name will be added to the list of the people God will remember for good. Amen. Have a good evening, everybody. Amen. Right Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and you. bye bye. God bless. Bye bye.